Hello and welcome again. Um, referring to a starter circuit that was a few comments were made trying to understand it. This is a typical starter circuit. The only thing that's missing here is the computer to engage the, the relay. But in all starter motor circuits, you'll see a relay, you'll see fuses, obviously, and you'll see the starter motor with the solenoid and the battery. We always start from this side. Now, analyzation and troubleshooting, I like to start from this side. As you always know, first of all, there's an ignition switch. Some In some vehicles today, there is no ignition switch. The Acuras and similar vehicles, you don't have it. You have a, a push button. The old style, obviously, the ignition switch. So, we're going to start here. Somehow, we have to get to this destination, this relay. This is the, the coil side with the resistor in parallel. And it's called the 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 con control side. This is called the load side because it's connected to the load. What's the load? The starter motor. When this is closed, so we have to make a path from here to here. Let's see how it happens. So first, you're dealing with a fuse. Pay attention always to the rating of the fuse. This is 20 amps. So we have current flowing, not voltage flowing, not power. We have current flowing. Current flowing, and we're going to forget about all these plugs and these connectors. We're going to go through an ignition switch. In which function, selection, does it have to be for the ignition switch to have current flowing to the relay? It can only be in this position because this is the only one that has a wire connected to it. None of the others do. So current flowing in the start position from here through a yellow wire again another fuse this is our second fuse we went down in our rating we went from 20 amps to 10 amps so we we don't expect anything more than 10 amps right now we're going through here we're going through another switch but this is the park neutral position switch and we know the function of it is you have to be in either park or neutral for the car to start if you're in reverse or anything else, it will not start. So therefore, it completes the path going from here, E, to G, connect to C1. Again, coming over here through this purple white wire, going through the relay, the top of it. And now the other side of this relay is connected to what you would expect, a ground, but a physical ground, not a computer ground at this moment for this model so when this happens obviously current is flowing here to ground we have a complete path yes we do what gave us the complete path two things the ignition switch and the park neutral switch those gave us the complete path if one of these are open guess what no complete path to ground so we have to make sure that this is working, this is switch, and the park neutral switch is working. If it doesn't work in park, put it in neutral, see if it works, if the car starts. Now, we go through here, through here. What will happen after that? Let's go to this part of the circuit. As we see over here, here's the battery symbol. Before, we did not have a battery symbol. We just had over here, it just said hot at all times. That means it's always connected. This, this fuse is always hot regardless of what position this is in. Yeah, I'm always gonna measure 12 volts here. I'm always gonna measure 12 volts over here. But on this fuse, I'm only gonna measure 12 volts, you know when? When this is in a start position. So this is not hot at all times. This is, because it's before the switch, this is after the switch. It makes a big difference. So we have a couple of wires coming here. Notice now this battery fuse. Notice this has no battery, no, no fuse over here in this wire. Why? This is the thick wire that goes to the starter motor. That carries the heavy, heavy current of 200, 300, depending on the cylinders that you have. So let's start again. We know how this side works. We know. How does this side work? This has to be active and magnetized. And this has to be in a closed position. How do we get this to be in a closed position? This has to be magnetized, right? Current flows through it. So we already have one variable. Current will flow from the positive, okay? From here, from the terminal, from here, through this fuse. Look at this fuse, 175 amps. How did we get from 
20 amps to 10 amps, 275 amps, to eventually 40 amps. Because this side of the, of the, of the relay controls the higher current. This side of the of the relay controls the lesser current, as you can see, less than 10 amps. This will be 40 amps. So this side, uh, a relay purpose is to control a lesser current with a higher current to another circuit, as you can see by this. Now, why is this 175? Well, there's a lot of things that you don't see in this schematic. It is continued. This goes to power distribution schematic. This means it goes to all the fuses. That's why it's rated so high. You need a lot of current, obviously, when you first start. The ignition coils, the sparks, the fuel injectors, um, the computers needs a lot of current. It's not shown here. The only thing that's shown is a wire from here to here to the B stud. The B stud is... The stud is is the battery stud is the one that goes to the fuse block that thick thick wire, right? As if, if it's gonna hundred if it's gonna carry so much current, it has to be a thick wire. So thick wire coming from the battery. In this case, we'll color a red one. Goes through here, goes through here, goes through here, goes through this ignition fuse. Remember when you see ignition. You see ignition, think of starter motor on the battery, on, on the fuse. So now we go through here, we go through here, go through here. Is this a closed position or open position? Well, if we have current flowing through here, this is in a closed position. So what happens? 30 is connected to 87, correct? Yes. Therefore, current can flow from here to here to the solenoids and closing the contacts and another high current is going to go through the starter motor. So, in conclusion, what two wires are going to carry the high current? This one, going to this one, a big red one, and another black one over here going to the starter motor. Okay, Which are the highest current fuses? This one and this one. Now, since this is closed, everything is fine. We have 12 volts here, okay? How much do we have over here? Zero volts because it's connected to ground. That means how much is across here? 12 volts. How much is over here? 12 volts, why? Why 12 volts? Because we're just going through fuses, we're just going through wires. We don't lose any voltage through that path. There's nothing in this path to lose voltage. What about when this is closed? How much should this be? 12 volts? Why? Because a switch. You cannot lose any voltage through a switch. Low resistance. And finally, until it gets to S terminal. B terminal, S terminal, M terminal. Now, troubleshooting wise. Okay. Now, a couple of things to, to, to remember. Why I pointed out the ratings of the fuses in the first place. Let's say we're troubleshooting, right? We have a no crank, meaning I don't think the starter motor is, is working, okay? What do I do? The battery voltage should be how much? Around 12 volts. Let's say the battery voltage is 10 volts. Do I keep on diagnosing this? No. First, you obviously have to recharge the battery as close to 12 volts as you can to do this troubleshooting. That's step number one. You don't want to you don't want to have a low battery or a weak battery and then go troubleshoot this. No purpose to that. Okay? So we put the fact that the battery is good. Now, 12 volts over here, and we said zero volts over here. Now, got a few problems. Why is it 12 volts over here? Because we know we do not lose any voltage through any wiring, through the park neutral switch, through the fuses, through the through the ignition switch. Okay? So it's 12 volts, zero volts over here. But that means that we lose 12 volts. This part of the relay is good. Or is it? Notice if you would have an open over here also, let's say over here, this would be open. Okay. Let's say this would be open. If you can see this. Okay. Hopefully you can see it. 87, 87 is the one that's supposed to be closed. 30 is the one that's always connected to what? To 12 volts. So this will be 12 volts. 
86, 86 and 85, you see, is the coil part, the coil. This is the coil, which should have some resistance. If this is working properly, great. 12 volts here, 0 volts here, great. If this is open, guess what? I'll have 12 volts over here. And since I'm not connected to the, to the battery, I'll have 0 volts over here. So how do I know if this is working properly or it's open and I'm just measuring 0 volts? How do I know? That's the, that's the problem. So what you can do is, if this is working properly, this is 12 volts and this is 0 volts, let me go to the other side. Okay? Let me go to this side, which is which side over here? This one. Let's see if this closed. This is the most important point on this relay. Very important. This tells you when this is closed that this is working. So we go 30, 87. I'm going to go here and we measure 12 volts. When I measure 12 volts, what does that tell me? That tells me that this side is working. That tells me this coil is working. Okay? Therefore, there is no open here. Okay? Number one. Number two, how do I know the ignition switch is good? Well, you know where I could go? I could go to the fuse. The fuse and I measure 12 volts across the fuse, 12 volts here. That means what? The ignition switch is good when I crank in the start position. I don't have to take apart the, the ignition switch. Another thing, let's say we have 12 volts here, 0 volts here, right? We think, okay, good, this is activated. I come over here and get zero volts. Where do I go next? Zero volts to the, to the solenoid. Starter cannot start. Where do I go next? I could go over here and make sure that I have all these working, and this is 12 volts. So I go over here, 12 volts. It comes now zero volts, a problem. I come over here and I measure 12 volts. What does that mean? This is working. Is this working? I have to measure 12 volts here, and I have to measure 0 volts over here. Let's say it would be open. That can cause this to not close. Where do I measure that? Over here. Okay, let's try to simulate. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, the meter that we use is rated at what? Hopefully you can see it. 10 amps. Can I use this meter to measure? Let's say I take out this fuse. This is 20 amps. Can I put this meter, I just showed you, 10 amps. Let's take out the fuse and measure the current? Your answer should be no. Why? Because this is only rated at 10 amps. Can I put this meter over here? Rated at 10 amps to measure the current? Yes, unless this is blown. I make sure it's not blown. That's the important part. Let's measure this. Let's say we're not sure. I measure 0 volts here, 12 volts over here, everything is good. I measure 12 volts over here, everything is good. I measure 0 volts over here, but this is not closed. What does it tell me? Maybe there's an open over here. Let's see. What's the first thing you should do? Here's, I put it on ohms, omega, okay? What's the first thing I should do, obviously, right? Well, let's see. First thing you should do is obviously zero the meter. Okay. Hopefully with one hand, it'll work. Okay. Now. With one hand, it'll work. Now. Great. Here we go. Let's see here. Okay. Let's, let's try this one more time with one hand. Okay. 0.2 ohms. Now we're making a connection. See the connection? First we have to ohm the meter. And one hand on the phone, one hand with this is not easy. But first we have to ohms this. Now we're good because we're measuring 0.2 ohms, which is good. What does it mean? It means that these probes are good. Okay, now, let me put this on pause and put across the coil. Okay, continuing to measure the coil. We're not sure. We're measuring the coil. The coil itself over here is this, 86 to 85, 85 to 86, with these points. They are opposite corners. 
Look how much we're measuring. We're not sure. We think maybe the coil is open. The fact that we measure 82 ohms seems that it's good. What's the specification or, or what's, the, what's the correct resistance? As long as we don't measure high resistance, open. Okay? Therefore, we know for 100% sure that this coil, th again, this coil, 85 to 86, which is a coil and a resistor across it, that's why it's so high, is this one and this one. Therefore, if you're not sure, see this? These are opposites. These are opposites. Therefore, that's what you should do. And you'll measure 82 ohms. That tells you that the coil, that tells you that the coil, boom, over here is good. Okay? Again, I like to do one exercise. If I'm not sure that this, that this is this is functioning, I'll first I put a meter, I take out the fuse, and I put a meter or a clamp meter, I put a a, a, a wire over here, knowing that it didn't blow, and I measure with a clamp meter across that wire. Or if it's safe to do so, and this is not blown, I'll take this meter and I'll put this meter across a current meter to measure how much current is flowing. What's that going to do? That's going to tell me if current is flowing through this. Okay? So, in other words, in conclusion, let's go over it one more time. We want, we have a starter motor problem. We're not getting 12 volts to the, to the solenoids to, to close the contacts, to engage with the pinion gear, to the ring gear of the flywheel, to the starter motor. I'm going to go over here and measure 12 volts. If I measure 12 volts, everything is good here, here. Problem seems like it's over here, right? Or it could be this wire over here with a voltage drop that's excessive. But first thing is first, let's cut the schematic in half. This is the most important part. This tells us that all this is working. Two switches are working. This tells us that all the fuses are working. One fuse, another fuse and the switch internally is working. Therefore, I got 12 volts over here. I should get 12 volts here. Let's, re let's go over it again. Instead of 12 volts, I got zero volts. What's my next procedure? Over here, make sure I have 12 volts. I get 12 volts over here. Where am I gonna go now? I'll go over here, 12 volts over here. If I get 12 volts over here, 12 volts over here, uh, my last place is obviously over here, zero volts, okay? If I get 12 volts here, 12 volts over here, or I get three volts or four volts, there's some resistance over here on the ground, okay? That means more. if you have resistance, you have a voltage drop. So I should get 12 volts here and zero volts over here. So try to go over it. It's, it's confusing, but that's the best way to troubleshoot it. Um, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and my other one, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Uh, please see some videos, how to, again, how to measure this relay in, in circuit with wires connected to the terminals in circuit in the relay. You don't have to buy these expensive uh, inserters for relays. You don't have to pull out the relay. You don't have to jump the relay with power probe or anything like that. The fact that I have 12 volts over here tells me everything is working on here. Everything is working here. Where's my next point? Over here, down here. That's the way to do it. Can I go over here? Yeah. If you can get to the starter motor, fine. But sometimes it's hard to access that. That's why I'd rather go over here to measure 12 volts. Can I go to the other side of the fuse? Yes, you can. You can measure 12 volts over here also. But that doesn't mean you have 12 volts over here. What if this is not engaged? So I hope this was helpful. I hope you understood it. If not, please uh, leave some comments or things like that. But always start. Divide the, divide the, the schematic. Go to the nearest point next to the load. Where is the load? Right here. Where is the next point next to it? Right here. This will be a fuel pump, again, over here. Thanks for watching, and subscribe, please.